Before Brian and I were living and traveling full-time in the van, we struggled to make decisions. We would agonize over every decision for hours, months, or even years. It took us six whole days just to decide on what flooring we would get for the van, if that tells you anything. And to be really honest, our discussions often got heated and the frustration of not being able to come to a decision felt exhausting for both of us. Making a decision often felt impossible. Looking back, I see it clearly. We weren't living the way we were meant to. So every decision we tried to make was from a perspective that didn't belong to us. We were living lives that, from the outside, seemed amazing. We were engaged, we had great jobs, we lived in a beautiful city, but something didn't feel right. After months of discussion, we made the major life decision to quit our jobs, buy a van, build it out, and then travel the world. Then commenced the in-between time. The time that often gets forgotten. The time between the major life decision and the arrival at that decision. What we didn't realize about that in-between is that we would have to make so many decisions in the face of uncertainty. There really were very few things we knew for sure. We knew we definitely wanted to travel full time in the van. When we thought about our decision to live in the van, we always deeply felt that it was the right decision. Whenever we talked about it, we were giddy with excitement. I got those warm butterflies in my belly that felt like excited nerves every single time. It felt like my cells were buzzing with the anticipation. But we really didn't know anything else. The in-between time for us was the van build. We knew that to move into the van and travel, we needed to finish the build. We tried to move forwards, but our indecision around all of the other decisions bogged us down. We lost hours, days, and weeks to discussions that kept going round and round in circles. Our indecision was pushing our move-in date further and further into the future. And at one point, we weren't even sure we would make it. We finally arrived at our move-in date, dragging the burden of our indecision along with us. Then, something interesting happened the moment we met our van in Europe. With each week we've been here, our relationship to decision-making started to change so imperceptibly that we didn't even notice. Until we found ourselves here, driving south towards Spain. Brian and I are on the road again and it feels so good. We left Norway, we started heading south, we knew we wanted warmer weather, it's already warmer which is great, and we didn't really exactly know what we were going to do, but a couple nights ago we looked at Google Maps, we mapped out a route to get to Spain, and we saw that there was this small city called Luxembourg along the way, or not city, a small country called Luxembourg, and we thought, well we've never been there, we'd heard of it before, but and uh, so now we're going to Luxembourg. So we'll be in Luxembourg today, maybe tonight, and then France tomorrow. So excited. It's such a stunning drive, like just big, beautiful farmlands, blue skies. Things are looking up, guys. Things are looking up. We're in Luxembourg. We just drove around the downtown and it was incredibly <laughs> hectic. So we decided we're not gonna try to park and we're gonna go to a hiking area in the country of Luxembourg, but not in the city. Yep. So time to grab some snacking supplies and some wine and head to the hike. Oh, and we're back to the pandemic now. Masks again. What do we got here? How about these ones? We're now in a very small town in Luxembourg and it's incredibly cute. <laughs> in the middle of an old ruin site and the road is now gravel. It's so adventurous. Oh wow, there's a big puddle. Bessie's gonna need a bath. How deep do you think it is? It's deep. I 
think this is gonna be really nice. There's a trail. Yeah. Wow, these trails look really nice. Yeah. Okay, we found a pullout. We think this is like the end of the road. So we're gonna try parking here. We know there's biking trails here and there's hiking trails back there. So we're just going to explore and see what happens. And we'll probably just try to stay the night here. And we're not sure what the situation is. There's no overnight, there's no, no overnight parking signs. So hopefully it's okay. We'll try it out. We just did three solid days of driving and we're both feeling sore and stiff. So we found this nature reserve and we're going to try to do a hike here and have a picnic and start to explore this new area. I've never ever seen anything like it before. It's so incredible. Here's to the good days, here's to the sorrows. If this is a mistake, I know about tomorrow. I don't wanna fight no more, cause I don't feel the need no more, no. Just wanna make it stop. Maybe it's something in the water, or maybe we just hit the end of the road. Right now it doesn't even matter. It's too late not to let it go, and that's why I wish you the best and say goodbye. You start to get dressed. And I want to try to catch sunset somewhere nice. So we're gonna see what we find. That was such a nice sunset. We had a baguette and a bottle of wine. It was amazing. The shift we were starting to feel became obvious. Once we had arrived at our goal of living in the van abroad, the one decision we knew was definitely right for us. Suddenly, everything else came into focus. Topics that we used to discuss for hours are now taking only a few minutes. We are both experiencing more clarity than we ever have before in our lives. We are starting to live our lives with ease and decisions are becoming easy. This ease and clarity has infused every area of our lives from personal to relationship to our businesses. We can clearly see where our strengths lie and what our desires really are. And it feels incredible. And we are gonna go to France today. We're so excited. This small town we found in Luxembourg is so cute. We're so glad we came to a small town instead of staying in the city because it's just so much more our vibe. And yeah, we're really close to the France border. So we're gonna head into France today. We just left like five minutes ago. And Brian says at the end of this town, we're gonna cross into France. So we were super close to France. And we're gonna head in and see what is up. I'm currently using my Duolingo to learn Spanish because our plan is to go to Spain after France. And we have pretty decent French. Brian's a lot more confident with his French than me, but um, we definitely both understand and can get by for sure. Anything to add, Brian? Well, you've got the Spanish background and I have none. I have no Spanish background. True. So we're going to kind of take turns as who can... I think this, I think this might be it. We're crossing into France right now. There's not... France, there it is. Oh, <laughs> there's just one sign. Okay, now we're in France. Luxembourg was primarily French speaking, so the signs seem the same. Brian just saw a sign. He said, oh, I need to make a quick detour. <laughs> I gotta do some flowers. Aw, thanks, baby. Oh, wow. They're like, like potted. Yeah. 
Oh, they're so pretty. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Aw, you got them because I'm not feeling good? Yeah. Thanks, baby. Yeah, I That's thought you'd really like, nice. thought you'd like those, but the... Okay, we'll see how long I can keep them alive for. I don't have a green thumb. <laughs> All our other plants are dying. <laughs> that one's just a skeleton now. <laughs> We just stopped in this super cute French village and it said on the entrance sign Village des Fleurs and we just drove past a boulangerie which is a bakery so we're gonna see if we can get some bread. Mm. Tasty. <laughs> oh yes. Look at that. Wow. Mm. Oh wow. So far in France, fresh bread, fresh flowers. <laughs> I'm loving France so far. I'm very much enjoying it. I know you've been here before, but I've never been here. Okay, let's try it. What are you up to? Making us some lunch. We found a, what looks like a nice lake here that people, like tons of locals are at. So it must be pretty popular. I think both Brian and I like the surprise of not researching too much about where we're going and just looking at the map, seeing a place that looks kind of cool and going. Sometimes, well, oftentimes that means we find a place, we go, there's nothing there or it's closed or it's like not worth while. But then sometimes we find places like this lake that are magical that we never would have found if we hadn't have just gone off on a whim and done something yeah. so it's uh all part of the adventure for us and we love having some spontaneity in our lives especially when so much of our lives have to be so planned yeah that's a really good way of putting it how do you know if you're making the right decision in my experience you can never know for sure you can only feel within yourself which decision, when imagining it, feels right in your body. Do you have a version of that warm, excited butterflies that I get? I think with each of those decisions, you move towards more and more clarity. And maybe the answer for us was that we truly needed to be living the lifestyle that we were meant for before we could figure all the other things out. Some decisions we made before moving into the van aren't feeling right now, so our plan is to start changing them, and we're okay with that. Maybe with each decision you make, all the others will come into clearer focus. Which one seems clear now? Does it feel good to imagine yourself committing to that decision? Can you feel your cells buzzing? I will leave you with this piece of advice I received from a mentor years ago. Very few decisions in life are permanent, so trust yourself and make the decision.